He's just like his mum. I swear, all he really cares about is food. Well, I'm behind on my editing today and I have got absolutely no idea what I'm going to vlog about, but something will come to mind, I have no doubt. At least it's nice weather. Yesterday I was on the way back from Brent Cross Shopping Centre, lovely place by the way, when I decided to stop at the South Mims motorway service station, which I usually do for coffee, but in this particular case I was missing one shot from the uh, previous day's blog post, so I thought well I'll just stop, I can pop a little energy in and, and get that shot that I needed. While I was there, I bumped into a Tesla engineer who was in the process of finishing up the Tesla supercharger bays that are going to be there, rather a large number of them. And I thought that we would make today's vlog post about the differences between the Tesla superchargers and most of the rest of the quick chargers out there. In particular, how it relates to the reliability of these chargers. This particular Tesla engineer actually told me that he used to work on the old the DBT, well, they're not old, but the, the DBT chargers. And he had a rather interesting description for the way he felt that they had been designed. He said something along the lines of, it's almost like somebody had thrown a load of components into a cupboard and then told an electrician to wire them all up. Now, I have heard that from other sources as well, and that could have something to do with the reliability issues that sometimes crop up. I mean, in my experience, it seems like something around 20 to 30% of them aren't working at any one time, and maybe I'm just really unlucky on that front. While I was at South Mims, I also managed to grab a few sneaky shots of the inside of the actual charge unit where the plug socket thing, the, you know, the plug that goes in the car comes from, as opposed to the actual superchargers where the banks of chargers are. And the design of superchargers is really quite impressive actually when you think about it and, and extremely sensible. They basically just contain 10 of the car's individual charge units. You know, Tesla thought, hang on a minute, what's the point of designing a whole new charger? We just take the ones that we've already designed for the car and we'll put lots of them in the cabinet, wire them all together and put some control software and hardware and stuff like that in there. But ultimately, what that creates is massive redundancy. And they're also quite reliable because of course they get used in the cars all the time. They have perfect sense. But that's the way Tesla is. They are not above doing things the easy way. In fact, they try and do things the easy way because, I mean, well, why not? That's how you make something reliable. You don't make it over complicated. It is really quite funny when you look at these sort of two different chargers I, you know from a, from a design point of view you don't have to be an engineer to you know go well that one looks much better than that one so there you have it it's a real shame in my opinion that no other car manufacturers seem interested in the actual charging side of the equation and honestly I think when it comes to them trying to be major players in the EV space. I think they're gonna learn the error of their ways, but we will see on that front. Before I forget, does everyone know how a quick charger works, whether it's a supercharger or a um, ordinary, you know, Chadamo CCS charger? Well, what it does is it takes the AC alternating current from the mains or for a very big power feed usually and it has to convert that because no batteries work on alternating current they all 
work on direct current. A battery is a direct current device. So, it takes that AC and it rectifies it, as they call it, into direct current. Lots of direct current. And this is exactly the same process that the car's onboard chargers will perform when you plug it into the wall. The difference is because you're plugging into a supercharger or a Chadamo quick charger, it does a lot more power. And so there's much more energy which gets fed directly into the battery. And with Chadamo, the charger takes over control of that battery charging process and with a supercharger, as I understand it, the car actually c controls the supercharger from on board using its sort of onboard software. So there you go, just a little interesting side fact to add into the mix. I hope you've all found this video to be interesting. If you have, remember to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you all tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Just like Ben Brown. We're all done now. See ya.